Now I recently had a viewer asked what he done is he uh, replaced his transmission, swapped that automatic for a manual transmission. Now his AC is turning on and off rapidly is what he way he explained it. Now if this is in my shop or at work, I'd get a work order. Customer states after replacing or modifying, replaced his transmission from automatic to a manual shift and having his ECM reprogrammed that now he has, his AC is not working properly. His clutch seems to be engaging, disengaging rapidly at idle, better at a cruise speed and he does have some cooling at a cruise speed. So with that in mind, first thing I'm gonna think of is what I wanna do is I wanna take it and I wanna uh, duplicate the issue because if it's something intermittent, then I wanna know that too. So what we'll do is we'll start the engine and watch our compressor and see if it does disengage and engage rapidly. Now, the ECM, if there's an issue, it will turn it on and off at a constant uh, time variance. It won't just on off, on off, on off. Because the head pressure, as the head pressure builds up, it puts a load on the compressor and it don't want to turn it on while it's under a load. So it's protecting, giving the pressure time to drop also protects our clutch wire and prevents the belt from breaking. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate the problem. Now that I've duplicated the problem, what I wanna do is I wanna see if our AC relay is actually mimicking the same condition. I wanna know is the AC relay cutting on and off or clicking at the same time the compressor is turning on and off. So let's check that. Now our compressor relay is located in our junction center fuse block. Located right here. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna lay my hand While the engine is running, lay my finger on there and listen and see if it clicks on and off the same time our compressor turns on and off. Now the noise may be a little loud in here for this, so. visually listen and feel for this click every time it turns on and off. I felt the click when it turned on so I do know that the compressor is turning on and off at the same rate that this clutch relay is turning on and off so I know that there's not a problem between the relay and the compressor. So that's a good sign. Now at this point, I do know that my relay is turning on and is turning the compressor on and off. So the ECM is in control of the compressor cycling, and this is a normal state. So now I'm gonna check and see why is the compressor turning the relay on and off. Now, if I didn't have this issue, say it was still turning on and off, I never felt the issue with my compressor clutch relay, then I know that there's probably a bad connection at the compressor wire has got stretched when I done when I replaced the, the transmission out. Number two, you've got grounds around the bell housing, so I want to check those grounds as well and Here's a location diagram. Next, I want to hook the scanner up and see if I've got any codes that could inhibit our AC compressor from turning on. And we're going to look and see if it's if the ECM is actually commanding the relay on and off every time that the relay turns on and off or the AC turns on and off. Now, it's we want to look at all codes because 
since how I know that I replaced the transmission with a different transmission I need to make sure all my grounds are in good shape and I want to make sure all the pigtails that was actually going to the automatic transmission is taped up not rubbing anything and I want to look and see because it may actually show that the transmission has a it's locked in overdrive and can't come out of it this could prohibit our AC from running because it, it'll try to take all the loads off the engine so that the engine can keep you moving and if it's in a higher gear than what it needs to be then it, it don't want to put any more stress on the engine to get you to a safe location. Now once I've determined that there's no issues inside the transmission that's causing the AC then I know that it's it's most likely not the programming that's doing it. In most cases, it's not the programming. It's more of something that you've done in your process, especially leaving the ground loose, pulling the harness a little harder than what it needed to be done. You know, where, where you pull that transmission off and didn't realize that you may have pulled a, a ground wire into. So that's where you need to start. And then we'll move on from there and we'll check our ground points. Now once I've determined that there's no issues inside the transmission that's causing the AC, then I know that it's, it's most likely not the programming that's doing it. In most cases, it's not the programming. It's more of something that you've done in your process, especially leaving the ground loose, pulling the harness a little harder than what it needed to be done, you know, where, where you pull that transmission off and didn't realize that you may have pulled a, a ground wire into so that's where you need to start and then we'll move on from there and we'll check our ground points now so we did find an issue and it says uh, transmission over temp uh, overdrive lock up won't disengage a code anything code like that and we know that that could prohibit because what we're going to do now is we're going to look and see if the uh, ECM is turning the compressor clutch on and off and if it is, then what our issue is, is it's got to be whether the transmission is in lockup or not. Now what's weird is if you got a, say you got a ground issue, if you got a ground issue, it'll back feed through everything else and it'll cause all kinds of habit. And it's, it's just weird crap that'll go on. So in most cases like this, where I may have changed the transmission to a manual transmission, or even if I changed the automatic, and change the transmissions out the the wires getting pinched between the bell housing and the engine block or if I overstretched one and actually you know pulled the, the, the wire apart so that's where you look because you know that everything worked good before you started working on it so it's something you done and not something that that this happened to happen at the same time so you need to address that to be sure that it ain't anything you done. So look at all your harnesses good. See if there's a pinch place on them. And especially when you're close to a bell housing, if you can pull your, your wrap off and you can pull on the insulation. And if it feels elastic, then that wire is broken on the inside. And it can pull that wire apart without actually breaking the insulation. I've seen that too. Now I know by the way it actually sounds because this this does not have an issue with the what the customer is having but I do know by the way it sounds that it is cycling on and off at a normal rate and that tells me that it is low of Freon had it been just erratic and jumping in and out then I know that there's an, an another issue because and what I want to do is look at the scanner and I want to see is the ECM turning it on and off when this is happening and I'm going to tell you right now it's not because the ECM has internal protection logic in it for the compressor and that's to keep the compressor from cycling on and off very quickly even even if it has a transmission issue he had that too now even if it has a transmission issue it's going to do the same thing so it, let's say it, it thinks it's stuck in uh, fourth gear and won't come down and it's, it's turning crap off so that the engine can have enough power to pull it in fourth gear. 
it's it's not going to turn the AC on and off. Say say it's going forth, and it says okay, everything's okay, and it's going forth. It's locked up, and it won't turn the compressor on and off rapid. It'll still time out, give everything time to make sure that we're in good shape before it turns it back on. It, same thing is low pressure, high pressure, any cycling switches on your AC. What it does is if there's a short in the cycling switch and it's turning on and off and on and off real fast, well, it keeps on pushing the time out until it sees an on status or an off status. So we got a shorted sensor and it's, it's on off, on off, on off, like our low pressure cycling switch. It says it's got plenty of pressure, no pressure, plenty of pressure. So if it's cycling on and off real quick, the internal logic says, wait a minute, Let's give it time to decide, are you on or off, before we turn the compressor back on. Let's give the compressor pressure time to lower before we turn it back on and it under a heavy load. And that, you know, saves our internal, comp com our internal components in the compressor and, and the clutch, the belt. Because at a higher, higher pressure, and if the compressor's turned on, the load is so heavy, it could snap your belt, and it's going to burn up your uh, compressor clutch. Now with the AC switch turned on, or the ignition switch turned on, we're going to pull up. I want to see the AC request signal, AC command, AC compressor cycling switch, our AC feedback signal from the relay, and the AC pressure recycling switch to see see what changes while this engine's running and see if it is if the ECM is in control or something else is it is controlled and turning the compressor on and off now I'm going to tell you you're going to have to have a signal from the ECM to the relay in order to turn the compressor on so unless that signal is the signal coming from the ECM is getting lost to turn the, the relay on and off that would be one issue but most likely that's not it because you didn't do anything in that area. Now we're going to start the truck up. We'll take a look at these, all these points and see what changes. I do know that just by listening to this one, that the, the Freon level is probably low. So let's take a look at it. Let's start it up and let's see what's going on. Now we're watching and AC request signal yes that is coming from our uh, cluster or our instrument panel where we've turned the AC on the user interface we're asking the truck to turn the AC on okay AC relay command off now what it what that's doing is telling DCM is telling us whether it's commanding the relay on and off so when it's commanded it on, AC on, so the ECM says everything's good, turn the relay on. We're not actually seeing whether the relay's on or off, we're actually seeing the command being sent. So if the relay don't turn on, the command's being sent, then it's a problem either in the relay or at the relay. Now uh, our AC compressor cycling switch, when it's in normal state, it says, hey, there's enough Freon. When it's not, because it is a low pressure cycling switch, it tells us the ECM is feeding, giving us a feedback saying that the AC compressor Freon level is low according to our pressure switch. So, barring we don't have a bad connection at our pressure switch, or the pressure switch itself is bad, we're lower Freon. Now, AC feedback, now what, the, what that's doing is it's, it's telling us that it's telling the ECM that it is turning on and off. So if it was disconnected, it would not get a, we would not get a feedback of saying that, the, hey, it's on, hey, it's off. And we'll also get a feedback or a code saying that, hey, it's stuck on or it's stuck off. And that would mean either a shorted relay or a short in that area of where it actually uh, plugs in. And then a pressure cycling switch is normal, so that means that we don't have an overpressure issue. Now, if it does trip that, 
it'll send a feedback and the scanner will tell us that over pressure. So all these things if you, you can do with a scanner and you can look at it and you'll know for sure that hey, all these things is working normal. So if I've done something, all these things work normal, which we can see just by our scan tool values that this thing is low of refrigerator. Now the customer gave us good feedback saying that they replaced his transmission, swapped that automatic for a manual transmission, and ACM been uh, reprogrammed. But that don't mean that something in our issue, you know, it still could be just a normal condition. So we need to check our basics first and act as if none of this stuff has happened to it. You know, we got to keep that in mind. But if we checked our basics, like on this truck, and no work had been done to the transmission or ACM, but this truck tells us that, hey, it's low Freon. It just needs more Freon in it. Now, you can add Freon based on that. You need to make sure your switch is working right. You need to hook a gauge up to it and see that you do have low Freon condition. And you don't want to add Freon until your, until your ECM says there's enough Freon leaves the compressor on because it may not achieve that if our uh, pressure switch is bad or if we've got a blockage. Okay, that's going to wind this video up. I hope you got some value out of it. I'm James Noble. This is going to be a series of AC videos and we're going to, in our next video, we'll pinpoint each circuit and see if we can help in that direction since how he is having a, a unwanted AC compressor engagement and what I would ask him to do, and this is what I would do, if you got your AC system off, does your compressor still engage and does it still engage and disengage? That's going to show we've got another issue other than an ECM problem. All right. Thank you for watching.